What's going on y'all, it's the kid Jay Nolan here, back with another video, but this one we're gonna talk a little bit about Creed 3, okay? Now, if you have not seen the movie, just know you're gonna get spoiler, spoiler, spoilers, all right? For me, coming off of Creed 1 and 2, I was definitely anticipating this movie. I felt like Creed 2 was better than the first one, so I was hoping that they would definitely up the ante and make this one even better. Creed 3 is Michael B. Jordan's directorial debut. This is the first one that he actually got behind the camera, navigated everything that he wanted to see on film, and I think he did an excellent job. Of course, he still had the help of Ryan Coogler, Keenan Coogler, and so many others that put in great work behind the scenes. I'm not discounting any of them. I'm just championing what Michael B. pulled off. Now, with this Creed 3, you get a little bit of history history of Adonis's character. Go back in time and you see him as maybe 12, 13 years old, something like that. And he's hanging out with an older guy, somebody who he trusts. He's riding around with him. He's taking him to this secret backdoor place where they're getting in. There's older women around, grown men handling money, playing cards, all this type of deal, right? They find themselves going in an underground boxing ring, you know what I'm saying, where the fights is taking place on a low level. You find out the older guy he's hanging out with is a amateur boxer and he's about to get in the ring and do some prize fighting. You know what I mean? Young Adonis sees that this guy has that heater in his gym bag, you know what I'm saying? Which is the first red flag hanging out with this older guy who's into a more mature crowd and he got that thing on him, that blicky. Older guy gets in the ring, knocks homie out in the first round. Boom. Money made. Everything's good. They on the way back to the crib. They stop at the liquor store or whatever, go get some snacks. But Adonis doesn't make it in. He sees this older guy, real old guy, you know what I mean? Old man, I should say. And he's like, yo, Leon, you remember me? Dude does not. And he gave his ass a quick one, two. You know what I mean? Boom, bam, bing. Nigga laid out. He starts laying in on him. This guy's probably 30, 40 years older than him. He going in. Next thing you know, Another group of older guys come in, they start jumping on him, getting their licks in, and the older guy he was hanging out with, boom, he pulled that thing out, let folks know we not to be played with, but then the cops pull up. He goes off. Now, of course, if you've seen any previews for this movie, you would know that the older gentleman that he's hanging out with is Dame, aka Jonathan Major's character, and we know the story that he goes off to jail, prison, he does some hard time, man. I think he did about 18 years, if I'm not mistaken. They fast forward to Adonis. He's got one last championship fight. Wins that. He goes ahead and retires. Daughter's growing up. They're doing the sign language thing, man. You know what I mean? And you just see really dope connection between him, his child, and uh, Tessa Thompson's character. And he's got it all at this point. She's in the studio inside the house. She's making records, making beats, writing songs, basically living the life. They've made their dreams come true. Everything is beautiful. Adonis is running the gym with Duke. Cool. You know what I'm saying? Nothing, nothing less than what you would expect. And then he goes outside and they have the first confrontation of adult Adonis and Dame. Mm. And you already know what time it is. Dame is riding the bus. He's carrying a bag around, looks a little Don Trotten. They go out to lunch or whatever, dinner I should say, because uh, he made it home late. And he discovers that Dame has got a plan that he wants to get back in the ring and he wants to get his opportunity to win a championship because that was his childhood dream. He was a Golden Gloves specialist, you know what I'm saying? He was one of the top boxers in the city coming out of South Crenshaw before he got locked up and all of that was stripped away from him from defending Adonis. So this already sets the scene up. And of course, like I said, if you've seen any of the trailers, you pretty much got the gist of it. The big thing is when do they face off? Looking out for his old friend, he invites him to join the gym. Like, yo, get back in the gym with us. Get with me and Duke. We get you right. You know what I mean? And what's so interesting to me is how Dame's character in the beginning is not anything like Dame's character in the end. We're going to get there, but it's like he comes in so humble, so gracious, Thank you. I appreciate you looking out. Didn't want to accept Adonis's money. He just wanted an opportunity. So it's just so interesting to see how the bad blood between them develops so fast in this movie. They put Dame in the ring to spar against the champ Felix and... He starts going a little bit too hard with Felix and Duke is already seeing it from the jump. This dude is a problem. He's going to be an issue and you cannot control this. You think you got it under control. That nigga is fresh out and he going to do what fresh out niggas do. 
He invites Dame over to his mansion to meet his family, his wife, and his child. Dame is just looking around, starry-eyed, like, man, look at what this dude has. This dude has everything that I aspired to ever since I was a young man getting in the ring. He has it. This is where things start to develop. You know what I mean? He starts taking jabs at him for wearing a suit and retiring and all of this type of stuff, right? And it, it feels like... You know, okay, yeah, it's just a little playful nature between friends, but you can tell there's some reality in that joke. Like, okay, I missed out on everything and you became the guy that I was aspiring to be. You wasn't even really into boxing. You was my little understudy. You was my shadow when I was doing this, but I gave my life up looking out for you. I need my shot. Dame was robbed of basically his future. And everything that was supposed to have been laid out for him, he's able to instantly connect with Bianca because she was robbed of part of her dream. You know what I'm saying? Not to the fullest, but part of it. You know, being that her hearing started going bad in the in the previous film, you know, she wasn't able to pursue being a big time singer the way that she wanted to. She's no longer able to perform. She's no longer able to be in the forefront of music the way that she was planning to be, you know what I mean? So now she's like a producer, songwriter, she's playing the background and, you know, he kind of picks up on that energy. Like, yeah, how's it feel having somebody else sing your songs and stuff like that? But then he drops the bomb on Adonis and is like, bro, I told you I want my shot at the championship. I'm not sitting here waiting in the wings. I'm not nobody's punching bag. I'm not nobody's sparring partner. I'm out here to get mine. My window is closing. I'm already getting old. And he lets him know, like, bro, what you asking me for is impossible, bro. You just got out the joint and you trying to get a championship bout fresh out. You don't even want to put a single match in first. You just want to get right in the professional rankings and be the number one contender. Like, dog, I love you. I, I, I got respect for you. I hold you down on anything. How the hell you expect me to do that, though? Come on, man. You can start seeing the frustration bubbling up like, bro, I did 18 years in the joint, bro. And let's not forget why I was in there. It's a very simple storyline, but it's it's such a common storyline in black communities, right? Like you go out, your boy get into something. It don't even matter if he's the one that started it. You got to look out for your people, right? But sometimes putting yourself on the line like that, you don't even know what you're opening yourself up to, right? Now, he had the heat on him, so of course, that definitely compounded the impact of the situation, having a firearm, plus he had priors. But man, he was just a young dude looking out for his friend, and he lost everything that was set for him. A little issue ends up popping off between Drago and Felix, right? And then some Hispanic guy comes out of nowhere, injuring Drago, busting his hand, breaking his hand to where he can't even box. So now Felix needs a new title contender to go to the fight. Of course, this is what Dame wanted all along. Like, hey, guess this is how it's got to be. We don't have a worthy contender. We need somebody to get in the ring because Felix needs his payday. He's been working up to this point. He's not content with pushing the fight back six months because this is money that he was expecting, which is what happens a lot of times in boxing, man. Just like Mayweather had his match recently, his original opponent got hurt or something. They had to make a quick decision and make a replacement, you know, because the payday had to come. That was what they were building up to. We're not about to push this back. We're not about to reschedule it. We're not about to get a whole new fight in the place it is. Put another chump in front of me and let me get paid. Dame gets to seize the moment. And he motherfucking rocked Felix Cradle. Very dirty fighter, you know what I'm saying? Punching them all up in the arm, on the thighs, all type of stuff, man. Elbowing them in the face, cutting the nigga, hitting them in his back, hitting them in his ear, all type of shit, man. Doing all the stuff that you know as a boxer is not legal. And the ref was kind of being a little, you know what I mean, turning a blind eye. You're getting a little, you know what I mean? The sport has definitely cracked down on a lot of that type of stuff, which is why the MMA and UFC and all of that type of stuff has kind of taken over the popularity of the sport because people want to see more full contact. People want to see more combat than graceful, strategic boxing. It's kind of outdated at this point. I'm a fan of it. I like the art of it, but the people that really pay for this stuff, they ain't into that. Dang does away with Felix pretty easily damn near paralyzed the man had them all laid out in the middle of the ring but couldn't open his eyes couldn't breathe couldn't see 
Then they turned that man into a fried vegetable. And it's at this point that the grudge between Dame and Adonis comes to that boiling point, right? Adonis' mama cuts the fight off. She knows what's going on. She went and pulled out all those letters that Dame sent him while he was in prison, you know what I'm saying, for all those years, photos, stuff like that. She was holding on to that stuff and keeping it away from him. She did not want him to ever think about that boy, wanted him to never relive that past, become a new person, clean up your life. We not here for none of this mess. Why you come down here messing with these people? She was like Red Daddy on Friday. You know what I mean? She sends him a text. I need to talk to you. He goes to the crib. She basically gives the big reveal like, hey, here's everything this clown sent you while he was in there. I know you think you owe him something. You don't. You got to be a whole new person. All of this success is based on the fact that I sheltered you. I kept you away from that lifestyle. Adonis, you know, just like every other Michael B. Jordan character in every movie, does not know how to handle his emotions. He has an emotional outburst on his mom and says, because of you, everything happened the way it did. And she reminds him, yes, everything. And none of this would have happened. All this championship belt, all the money, all the success, none of it would have happened without the decision I made. So please remind yourself or who you talking to. He goes and confronts Dame. They have a few words, a little spat. And Dame lays a cold cut on him. You know what I'm saying? A cold cut. Gave that boy a Turkish sandwich with the banana peppers. Salt, pepper, vinegar, and oil. Knock that man clean to his knees. Looks him in the eye and say, yeah, you all right. And then tells him, help yourself up for once in your life. Or get knocked out. Like your father used to. <laughs> Kitchen is rising, man. It's getting real crazy. Getting real heavy. You feel me? I'm really, I was really tripping off the fact that the nigga didn't fight back. Nigga just took a ringing right hand and didn't do nothing. Didn't retaliate. Didn't do nothing. Just walked off with his tie loose. Starts getting flashbacks. And at this point, you know, all right, they really about to go at it. They're going to have to close this chapter for good. This nigga finna come out of retirement, of course. Why would you do a Creed 3 if he ain't boxing? He goes back to the house. He got a black eye, basically. He don't want to talk about it. He don't want to talk about Leon. He don't want to talk about his time in the group home. The nigga don't want to talk about a motherfucking thing. You know what I'm saying? Nigga wants to go home and be silent with his lady, knowing when you play like that, you're going to end up in the doghouse. You're going to be sleeping on the couch. It's going to be all of those types of things to come, bro. Quit playing. Talk to you later. He's not getting it. She told him to get his shit together, as she should. Shortly thereafter, his mom has another stroke. She ends up dying. You know, he's at her side in the hospital on her way out. And it's settled. Yeah, he's coming out of retirement. He's got to settle this once and for all with Dame. There's only one language he's going to speak that he can respond to, and that's getting in the ring boxing. He goes up to Sports Center with Steve and A to let everybody know what it is, and he can't even get the words out of his mouth as to what he wants to announce because once Dame saw him on TV talking to him, he calls into the show and they have a live argument on TV where he's calling him a sucker, a coward. A turncoat. He turned his back on his family. All of these things with Stephen A sitting there looking at him. Damn, you gonna let this boy talk to you like that? What is really going on? Donnie snaps and he's like, you know what? Yeah, I challenge you. Now, that's the part that made me a little frustrated. It's like, bro, why is Creed challenging this nigga? You feel me? Creed is 26 and 1. Now, I ain't going to lie, 26 and 1, that's kind of a short career for retirement in boxing. Niggas, be, niggas used to fight like 40 fights, 50 fights, 70 fights. I think even Mayweather did at least 42, 41 fights. And you about to call out a nigga that just won one match professionally and got the chip? Like, nah, he should have had to work his way up to you. They should have gave Dame at least two more matches to like really dominate the ring before he got the creed. You know, that's one of my main critiques of the movie. I don't have too many, but that there was like, bro, come the f gone, man. As a sports fan, as a boxing fan, as somebody who came up playing knockout kings, fight night. Y'all see, I said knockout kings. Y'all, a lot of y'all ain't even old enough to have played knockout kings on the PlayStation. You know what I mean? But I came up on all that. So for me seeing this nigga Come out the joint, win one match, he the champ, and now you got the former champ challenging you to a match. I was ready to throw my fucking phone. This is one of those willing suspensions of disbelief type of moments. You just got to let it go. Dame is in so much better shape than this nigga, bro. Like, I don't even think they would realistically be in the same weight class in real life if they were boxing. I just think Jonathan Majors just has 
hella more weight on him in muscle. Again, I got to take my actual sports fan nature out of this or else I wouldn't be able to enjoy nothing. But you can see clearly in the conditioning and training that Adonis just ain't all the way there yet. All right, we get to the fight. First couple rounds going pretty smoothly. He looks, uh, Adonis looks a little rusty, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, Dame is in so much better shape. He's fresh out. He got new energy. He's the new champ. He's, re he's basically revitalized, living out the dream, punching on this nigga, you know what I mean? Adonis is, you know, slowly but surely doing his thing. One thing I don't like about Adonis's character, and this is kind of, I guess, pretty consistent with the Rocky legacy, is that his defense is weak as hell. Like, he always be just getting his ass handed to him, punched left and right. His opponents always brawl the shit out of him, and he has to figure out how to get through it. I hate that about his character. You know what I'm saying? Of course, that does make for the drama in the movie. There has to be some type of build up. There has to be a comeback story. But just watching it, I'm like, bro, just goddamn guard your head, dog. Dame just looks so much stronger. Even when you hear the impact of their punches, every time Dame hits him, it's like a poof. And then when Adonis hits him, it's like poof. Like these niggas is clearly in two different leagues, but... You know, for cinematic effect, you got to make it make sense. Next thing you know, after round three, these niggas go into the Mortal Kombat nether realm. You know what I'm saying? It was almost like nigga went to Scorpion's lair. Stadium became empty, all blacked out. They going at it, punching each other, parrying, going, grabbing each other. No ref even. You know what I'm saying? Dame gets Adonis up against the ropes and starts busting him, giving him body shots. You know what I'm saying? Next thing you know, some bars come down behind him. Crazy. And of course, that's a reminder of all the time that Dame did in the joint for him. Like, yeah, nigga, I did all that time for you. You became the, the big dog on campus. I'm out. I'm ready to whoop your ass. And I'm ready to take and keep what's mine. Yeah, you got to get reminded of these bars. But then you also start to see Adonis getting his footing together, getting his punches together, getting his defense together finally. You know what I'm saying? So they're going at it and they're getting good licks on each other. They snap back into reality in front of the crowd for the 12th round, the final round of the fight. And now it's about to be determined who's actually going to win. The announcers are saying that it's been even the whole time. Which way is this going to go? I ain't going to lie. Coming into the fight... I almost thought that this was going to be a tragic ending. You know what I'm saying? I don't know what the what the plans are for the future with the Creed franchise. I don't know if they're going to continue to do a four or five. You know what I mean? If they're going to introduce a new character or a new quote unquote Creed. You know what I'm saying? There is a bit of foreshadowing there. I'll get to that in a minute. But I'm like, man, if they make this the last Creed, is this nigga going to die in the ring like his dad? Is that how y'all going to put the book in on this? But... I'm going to go ahead and let y'all know now, that's not how it ends. Clearly, they make it to round 12. It's an even fight. And now it's time for them to figure out who the victor is going to be. Now, earlier in the fight, Dame hit him with a mean uppercut that knocked all the breath out his ass, all the water, all the everything. Like a bunch of spit just came flying from this nigga mouth like a fucking pit bull or some shit. Had him laid on his knees, brought him down, almost had a 10 count on him. So, of course, at this point, it's like, all right, he got to return the favor at some point. You know what I mean? They're going at it. Boom, bam, wap the bam. Duke let him know, like, hey, man, you've been boxing up to this point. It's time for you to become a fighter. All that guilt, all that shit from the past, all that whatever it is that you holding on to, it's time to let it go. Walk into what it is. I ain't gonna lie to y'all, fam. I thought that was the worst advice that he possibly could have gave him. Now, why do I feel like that was bad advice? Number one, Adonis' character is not a quote-unquote fighter. He's not a brawler. He's not the type of boxer that's just gonna go in and go upside a nigga head. He's more of a, the Rocky type. Like, he gonna get punched around, do his thing, he's gonna dodge some stuff, and then he gonna knock you out. You know what I mean? Almost like lucky fights. The experience starts to come to a head because Dame, although he is a good fighter, he has way more power. He's a bit faster. He's got a lot more oomph under every hit. You know what I mean? Even his jabs hit hard, but he's not a seasoned professional, right? He's a prison boxer. So he's not going to be as disciplined when it comes to his aggression and stuff like that. And that's where Adonis character has the leg up because he's had 27 prior fights in the professional rankings. 
So needless to say, he ends up knocking his ass the fuck out. Which, to be honest, was not the ending that I expected. Again, I thought he was going to die in the ring, but I saw that he was not. But I thought he was still going to lose, and that would be like, you know, the passing of the torch to the next piece of the story. Not to say that uh, Dame was going to be the next, quote-unquote, Creed protagonist, but I just thought that he would go out on a losing match. I was wrong. After the fight's over... Adonis goes into the back room, you know what I'm saying, to meet up with Dame and set all this childhood beef and all of that to the side, you know what I mean, go check on him, have a conversation with him, and then you can see Dame is on the same page. He's like, I guess you did learn some things while I was gone. You didn't need me as much as I thought you did. They're able to get past the machismo macho shit and actually talk as men, as old friends, and they're able to bury the hatchet, do their old handshake. And Adonis lets them know, hey, bro, if you ever need me, you know where to find me, man. The drama don't look good on neither one of us. He apologizes for abandoning him and not checking on him during his sentencing and all of that stuff, which I think was definitely the right thing to do. Even though he wasn't aware of the letters that were being sent his way, you know, you still got to accept the fact that even though I didn't get the olive branch he was sending me, I could have sent him a letter or something or an acknowledgement of, hey, man, I know you doing I know you down, you know what I mean? But you're going to get out. It's going to be all right. Hold your head. That didn't happen. But again, they were able to put that behind him. And even Dame says, you know, it's not on you. We were kids. It never was your fault. And Adonis lets him know the same, that they were just two young men coming up in a flawed system. They were in a group home. They were being abused. What else were they supposed to do besides get in trouble? Once Adonis leaves the locker room, he goes back to the ring where Bianca and his daughter are. His daughter's in the ring jumping around, shadow boxing. And this is where you kind of see the foreshadowing of what's to come. If or when they, whenever they decide to do another Creed movie, I think the passing of the torch is going to be with his daughter, which I think would be very interesting to have a female-led boxing movie that is mainstream. Now, I know we had the Halle Berry movie that was on Netflix, and that was actually a really good boxing movie. It wasn't in theaters. It wasn't box office, you know? Um, but I think if they do Creed with a, with a leading lady to hold the mantle, that would be kind of fire. We got to see Creed relived. We got to see Dame come in. It would be I would be remiss if I don't talk about Dame character. This nigga is basically... Tyson reincarnated. Somebody need to go ahead. I mean, he probably won't want to do another boxing movie. He seems like the type of actor that doesn't want to play similar roles back to back. So he probably would never do it. I know Hulu had that unauthorized biography, whatever that was, of Mike Tyson. But that nigga should have been Tyson. That, his name shouldn't even been Dame. It should have been Mike, at least. From the hair, from the high top, you know what I mean? The little baby high top to the way this nigga was built, to the black trunks, you know what I'm saying, to the attitude, the prison mentality, that nigga was Tyson. I know he was studying all that nigga tapes to get ready for the movie. But then if you got the daughter moving forward as the next Creed, she can have the whole Layla Ali story, which you got to respect it. All in all, if I had to give this movie a rating, it would definitely be a solid 8, maybe even an 8.5. You know what I'm saying? And the only reason why I won't say that it's a 9 or a 10, of course, like I said before, my gripes with Dame's story being so fast, so expedited, the fact that he got to raise through the rankings with only one fight, that was like a major dock for me just because it was like, bro, don't, don't play with me like this. We all know it don't work like that. But that doesn't take away from the cinematography. Definitely doesn't take anything away from the actual in-ring action. Doesn't take away from the storyline. Doesn't take away from the vulnerability that Michael B. was able to show in his character. Some of the uh, subject matter in the film about how uh, Bianca had to, you know, move on. Didn't get to fulfill her dream the way that she wanted to. But she's been going through therapy. She's trying to get him to do therapy so that he can release some of the tension and things that he's holding on to. Of course, those things always make for good stories and movies because you always want to see the main characters show some sort of growth. I enjoyed that element to it. I even like Dame's character. You know what I'm saying? I said he was Tyson and I think he showed really good layers in 
in the short capacity of which they showed him of being a young man locked up home. He snapped. You know, what I mean, you see, he's kind of going through his own emotional issues where he's got to try to rebuild his life. But he's got the house arrest ankle bracelet on. He finally gets that off in order to do the match. And, you know, he's trying to get legit. All of that is dope. The fact that they had forgiveness in the end made for a great story. You know that I do recommend this movie and I do hope that they continue it at least for one more. But I think if they do, it's going to be passing the torch to the daughter. I could absolutely be wrong, but where else do you go? And to be honest, I think if they do take that angle, there's going to also be a rift between him and Bianca. Hopefully they don't divorce or nothing like that. Nothing crazy, but it would definitely cause a lot of tension between them because it's going to come to a head. Maybe she's like in college you know what I'm saying? Or something like that. And she decides she wants to box. And uh, that's going to bring a wedge between them because no no boxing wife or girlfriend wants their child to grow up and go through the same thing that the father did. You know what I mean? Yeah, it afforded them the lifestyle that they have, but nobody wants to see their child get beat up, tossed left and right in the ring. Even if they do come out as the winner, seeing those Seeing that blood, those cuts, those scars, the emotional roller coaster that that puts you through, I think that would definitely cause a lot of tension in their household. So don't quote me on this. You know what I'm saying? Don't hold me to the fire if it don't happen. I'm just giving my outlook on if they do take it there, that could be a possible outcome. Let me know what y'all think of this recap down below in the comments, man. Be sure to like and share this video. If this is your first time seeing me on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. Hit the post notification bell for all updates, man. Again, there's no way in hell you should have made it to the end of this video if you didn't want spoilers. So don't be in the comments talking greasy because I got the bacon for your dumb ass if you play with me. All right? Much love and respect, y'all. Peace.